Hello and welcome. The topic before us today is glycolysis. Glycolysis is the universal pathway of glucose metabolism. Let's take an overview of glycolysis. What is glycolysis? How is glycolysis defined? It is the metabolic pathway that converts glucose, a six carbon molecule, into pyruvate, a three carbon molecule molecule, generating energy for the cell to carry out its function. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of cells, and it is an important step in energy production. It is also central to both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. What are the key features of glycolysis? First, the starting molecule is glucose. Like I said earlier, it is a six carbon molecule, and the end products are two molecules of pyruvate, two molecules of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is gained, and two molecules of NADH. There are two phases of glycolysis, two phases taking place in glycolysis. The first phase is the energy investment phase that uses up two molecules of ATP. And the second phase is the energy payoff phase that produces four molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADH. There are several steps in the energy investment phase of glycolysis, and we'll look at them one after the other. Glucose is phosphorylated by the enzyme exokinase to form glucose 6-phosphate. And in this reaction, one molecule of adenosine triphosphate is used up. After which, glucose 6-phosphate is isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate. After fructose 6-phosphate is formed, it is also phosphorylated to fructose 1,6-biphosphate by the enzyme phosphofructose kinase 1. In this reaction, another molecule of adenosine triphosphate is used up. After this, fructose 1,6-biphosphate is splitted into two three carbon molecules. The first carbon molecule, the first three carbon molecule is glycerol aldehyde three phosphate, and the second is the hydroxyl acetone phosphate. And both can isomerize to either glycerol how the high free phosphate or the hydrogen acetone phosphate. The second steps or the second phase of glycolysis is the energy payoff phase and it has steps also. The first step is the conversion of glycerol how the high free phosphate through the process of oxidation to bisphosphoglycerate and because both glycerol hydride free phosphate and the hydroxyacetone phosphate are convertible. They are, the hydroxyacetone phosphate is converted back to glycerol aldehyde free phosphate. Two molecules of NADH are produced in this reaction. ATP is also generated by substrate level phosphorylation. Then there is the formation of free phosphoglycerate and then a 2 phosphoglycerate. Phosphoenol pyruvate is then converted to pyruvate by the action of pyruvate kinase, producing two molecules of ATP. It's also another level of substrate level phosphorylation. Now, looking at the diagram on this slide, we see glucose is first primed and a phosphate group is attached to the six carbon compound to form glucose six phosphate. And this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme exokinase in the presence of magnesium ion. Glucose six phosphate undergoes isomerization to fructose six phosphate acted upon by the enzyme phosphoexoisomerase. Fructose six phosphate formed undergoes a second primary reaction. It is phosphorylated to produce fructose 1,6-biphosphate. And the enzyme responsible for this reaction is phosphofructose 
Phosphor Fructo Kinase 1. Fructose 1 6 biphosphate, a 6 carbon sugar, is cleaved into two 3 carbon sugar molecules. It's cleaved by the action of the enzyme aldolase to produce glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and the hydroxyl acetone phosphate. Now, the hydroxy acetone phosphate can be converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by the action of trials phosphate isomerase. Once glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is produced in the energy investment phase, it moves, up, it moves on to the energy payoff phase. In this case, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate produced is converted, is oxidized, and as well phosphorylated to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate by the action of the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And in this reaction, NADH is produced. Now, the first ATP that is formed from the reaction is formed when 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate is acted upon by phosphoglycerate kinase to produce 3 phosphoglycerate. Now, 3 phosphoglycerate is acted upon by emutase to produce 2 phosphoglycerate. It gives away a molecule of water, and phosphoenol pyruvate is also produced. A second ATP is produced at this point. At this point, it's a substrate level phosphorylation where phosphoenol pyruvate is acted upon by the enzyme pyruvate kinase to produce pyruvate. So in this payoff phase, we can see that both glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone have produced two molecules of NADH and four molecules of ATP. Remember, two molecules of ATP have been used up in the energy investment phase. Now, how is glycolysis regulated? Certain key enzymes in glycolysis are well regulated. Exokinase, the first enzyme responsible for the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, is inhibited by high levels of glucose 6-phosphate. Phosphofructose kinase, one, the enzyme responsible for the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-biphosphate is activated by high levels of adenosine monophosphate, and that enzyme is also inhibited by high levels of adenosine triphosphate and citrate. Pyruvate kinase converts phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate, is inhibited by adenosine triphosphate and is activated by fructose 1,6 biphosphate. What is the energy yield of glycolysis? The net ATP gain is 2 ATP because 2 ATP, two molecules of ATP have been used up in the energy investment phase. And so if we subtract that two from the four produced in the energy payoff phase, we have a net gain of two molecules of ATP. Two molecules of NADH are also produced in oxidative phosphorylation. Pyruvate is produced as a central metabolite for both aerobic and anaerobic uh, respiration or, or pathways there. Aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria with more ATP produced because pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, and then that condenses with oxaloacetate in the citric acid cycle to form citrate. And when it goes through that cycle, more ATP is generated, carbon dioxide is produced, and the end product, water, is also produced at the end of the day. Anaerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm in the absence of oxygen and the energy yield from anaerobic respiration is very low. What are the clinical significance of glycolysis? 
the clinical significance of glycolysis. Uh, glycolysis takes place at a very high rate in tumor cells. And uh, that's called the Warburg effect. And it makes the cell grow very fast. Impaired glycolysis contributes to high level glucose in the blood of diabetic patients. And altered glycolysis is implicated in many neurological diseases, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Deficiency in glycolytic enzymes, such as the pyruvate kinase deficiency, may lead to anemia and just jaundice in the patient. Hypoxia in glycolysis. Glycolysis supports ATP production under low oxygen condition. Hypoxia is low oxygen condition. And glycolysis supports ATP production under this low oxygen condition. In summary, glycolysis is a universal pathway for glucose metabolism. In glycolysis, ATP and NADH are produced, and these molecules are essential for cellular energy. Glycolysis plays a crucial role in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Thank you very much. We'll see you in another class. Have a good day.